If you have been following me for some time, you already know that one of my favorite compressors is, and always have been, the Empirical Lab Distressor. I owned four of them for most of my career, then cut some of my gear list down when I moved to LA, now I have two. But my gear list is getting bigger, even bigger than before now. And one of the units that I've always wanted because every single time I tried, I was wowed by it, has always been the Fatso. But for some reason, I never got around to get one before. Well, I made up for it now because I got two. The second is on its way here, but the first unit is already in the rack, so I can show you what the new Empirical Lab Fatso EL7X can do. Let's take a listen. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixplus TV. Hope you're having a great day and stay safe out there. Before we start, please check the info box down below for free plugins, special discounts and offers, and also my mixing courses on ProMix Academy. A new one was released not long ago, Mix and Master in Modern Rock. And if the videos are helping you, you wanna support the channel, click the join button down here to see all the perks of becoming a Mixplus TV member, access to exclusive content, and also mix consultations with me via Skype or email. Let's get to the video. Being closely related to the distressor, of course, of course, I've always loved the Fatso, even if I didn't own one myself up until now. I had the chance to work with the machine many, many times in different studios, and every time I touched it, I was like, why don't I own this one already? But after spending some time with it in my environment, as opposed to working with a client for a client in another studio and being like kind of in a rush, this unit just clicked with me like few others did. The original Fatso Jr. was released many, many years ago, but it's still at the top for what it does. The one that I have here is the new and improved EL7X version. So before hearing it in action, let's take a look at what this thing is and all the things he can do. First of all, what is the Fatso? It is a compressor, it is a saturator, is it a tape emulator? is a clipper, well, it's all of the above and more. FATSO is an acronym and it stays for Full Analog Tape Simulator and Optimizer. The new EL7X has improved logic with button hold function to compare settings. Is it a stereo and dual mono processor, meaning you can use each channel individually or by clicking both comp button, you link the two channels and one sets of control, control both channels. The FATSO has basically four types of processing. One, harmonic generation and soft clipper, the distortion generation part. Anytime you pass audio through the FATSO, it passes through a smooth organic saturation circuit, except when it's in bypass. And this is a true bypass. This processing is useful for softly but instantly around peaks and transients, allowing a higher average level, increasing loudness without increasing peak nominal level. And this happens just passing audio through the fat cell without none of the other three processing going on. The second type of processing is the high frequency saturation, the warmth control. This circuit is meant to simulate the softening of the high end that occurs with analog tape. Basically, as the worm is increased, overly bright signals and transient will be quickly attenuated and softened. The time constant are nearly instant, so the high frequency returns very quickly after a loud brittle burst. So you can think of this of kind of the most natural and analog worm sound de -esser but we are far from that. Third type of processing, transformer and tape head emulation. This provides the effect of input and output transformer of older devices and adds the low frequency harmonics that characterize analog tape. This is extremely useful on pure low frequency type tones that don't cut through small speakers. Think of it as a combination of saturation and psychoacoustic processing. And this is an actual transformer circuit. Fourth type of processing on the FATSO is the classic knee compression, empirical lab style. And we have four compression types. Bus, this is a very gentle two to one type ratio with slow attack and fast release. Usually one to four dB of compression is what you wanna shoot for for this type. 11 replaces the old GP ratio in the old version version of FATSO and emulates the famous Uray 1176LN in 20 to 1 ratio with the slowest attack and fastest release. This specific 1176 setting has been used on countless records. Third type of compressor is track. 
This is a distressor type of compressor that it's great for tracking instrument and vocals during the recording process or during mix down. A lower ratio compared to 11, this compressor now has its own lead as opposed to the old version. Fourth type of compressor is Spank. This is a radical limiter type compressor that was specifically designed to emulate the nice squeeze of the older SSL talkback compressor from the 70s and 80s. But this is quite a bit higher fidelity than the original. By combining Spank with the other three compressors, one really has seven compressor types on this thing or ratio, although the spank aggressive nature will tend to dominate when combined. If that wasn't enough, we also have the tranny. Tranny is short for transformer. The result when engaging the tranny will be a little more edge in the midrange, but most important, especially for modern music, the super low frequency will have been harmonically altered in a way that allows them to sound louder, even though the peaks are less than the original. Again, crest factor. But it's not just a matter of loudness. Playback on small speakers will show an improved audibility of the low end from the result of the psychoacoustic pleasing distortion that Tranny adds. Let's hear this beast in action. I will stay on drums first and try to show you every individual processing is gonna be easier to hear what they do. First one is just passing material through it, through the saturation circuit. First pass, just passing these drums through the fat. So you can hear I level matched. And what you hear is not level increase, it's just harmonic content. Just passing through it, you could hear the view meter lighting and the pinned LED lighting up on the snare. So we are in the sweet spot and you could hear the difference with and without transformer. Let's start to drive this hard. Pushing the input up to nine. Extreme settings for the saturation circuit. All right, this was just passing material through it. You hear what kind of lovely saturation this unit has. This alone should be enough. Let's hear the warm circuit in action. Like I said, this tames the high end. Pay attention to the cymbals. It's also amazing on vocals.
Okay, you can hear extremely well how it rounds the top end to the point of muffling things if you go up to seven in this case. I think if you have a harsh vocal, too brittle, recorded with a bright mic, okay, or electric guitars that are too harsh, this is literally the cure. I actually use it in a stem mastering on vocals because of that. You can see the action of the warm control here, all right? The top row of lead, this is how much you're reducing. So you notice also that the warmth control is independent, regardless if you have it linked or not. That is great because think like in this case, you put it on your drum bus, okay? You wanna link the compressor, but this side needs more taming than the other side. So even if everything is linked, the warm control being independent is what we want. And after this, I'll play with it on vocals and other material, okay? So let's start with the compression settings. This was bus, so the gentle version. Now we have 11. I absolutely love how it just makes things sound and not just drums, this, I don't know, this feeling of aggression that it puts on the drums. And I'm exaggerating, this is probably a settings you would use on parallel channel, but you, this is the 11, so is the um, specific settings of the 1176 that is meant to smash things. Then we have the track comp, which would be better on vocals, but I'm gonna keep uh, staying on drums for this example. So. It's the more distressor-like compression, okay? Keep in mind that the nominal levels are matched and you can hear it from the snare specifically, which is what is being grabbed more on the stem. It's even louder without the compression. It's the overall harmonic and power that makes the drum feel louder. But even this setting that will be probably more fit for uh, bass or vocals or something not percussive, it sounds pretty amazing on drums. Spank is the fourth. I hope you can hear from the video. I, I know most of my audience will. This is not a matter of volume. This is a matter of like crest factor and power and, and fatness. It, nothing really sounds like this thing, to be honest. And I have plenty. So this is a beast on its own. The kind of saturation is so perfect for drums, regardless if it's acoustic or a loop or EDM or hip hop. And sure, the way you mix and the kind of sounds you like will dictate what gear you like more or less, but this definitely clicks with my style, with how I mix. And as soon as I turn it on, I got so many tricks in mind that I can do with this machine. Anyway, let's uh, keep going with the combinations. Keep in mind that the Spanx will take over the other models, so the differences are not that obvious.
but you can hear when it's 11 and spank the two extreme settings the, the drum sounds just smash nothing is moving right there you want a parallel channel with sustain and room and bigness that's gonna be it with track the attack is a little loser it's some trends and passes it's very pleasant the three combinations do have their differences it's just not as obvious as the main four types of compression of course all right you heard pretty much all the combination that will give you a general idea and now i'm gonna play with it with some other material vocals all I ever wanted was to stand my ground big words to confuse and spin your mind around but every little stab just takes me further down I found my soul just waiting in the lost and found hear the warm circuit in action here but every little stab just takes me further down but every little stab just takes me further down But every little stab just takes me further down But every little stab just takes me further down But every little stab just takes me further down But every little stab just takes me further down all right what i was saying about taming harsh vocals let's try the track compressor on this but every little stab just takes me further down i found my soul just waiting in the lost and found babe it's nothing you did so stop talking stupid we gave it a taste now it's done I'm out for self-healing, you ain't got that feeling. Bass. Acoustic guitar. Bass compression. Especially this last part. The last example is probably going to be a common question. Can I use it on my two bus or for mastering? Absolutely for two bus and on mastering on occasion I don't see why not. So let's try on a couple of mixes.
you hear here in this example, even uh, if I turn the warmth uh, up to one, so I'm taming a little bit higher and the tranny, it just makes everything more aggressive. And this is a finished mix, by the way, they didn't need more processing, but uh, just to give you an example. Ain't no sunshine on this side of Used to be homies, so I'm changed up hard working, not a sailor. Just caked up, I made up my mind, I gotta get the bag. Shorty, I am not the one, so don't you get attached. And where I am from, it's like we never had. So if I gotta split, then I get the better half. And I just paint the picture nine. I'm pretty sure you notice the top end of the vocal with uh, with the tranny. So can you use the fat cell for two bus or for mastering processing? Absolutely yes, if you know how to set it up. And as usual, with this machine more than with others, with saturators, hardware saturators in general, gain staging is freaking everything, okay? I still laugh about YouTubers online saying, oh, it's not that complicated. You just turn the fader down, just I like, can't clip the 32-bit architecture. Yes, it's not that complicated, but it's not that. <laughs> you need to learn gain staging for so many other reasons. Anyway, I'm digressing. I think this is it for this video. I love this unit very much. Actually, Dave there told me that they weren't even sure if they were going to release it when they designed the machine because it was kind of difficult to box this unit in. What is it? It's a saturator, a compressor, a tape emulator, a clipper all of it, like we said before. Anyway, I hope this video was useful. I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. If you have any question, leave it in the comment down below. And yes, I will probably do a comparison with the Neves and probably with the Fusion, something like that. You ask in the comments, we'll try to get it done. Please follow Mixbus TV on Instagram and Facebook. We have a lot of exclusive material in there. Exclusive giveaways too, but also pictures, video, clips, unboxing and preview of new units that are always coming, like this one here. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and click the notification bell. It helps the channel a lot. Stay safe. See you next time.